Hi, it's Katrina. From bloated beached whales that might explode at any moment to ghost towns plagued by earthquakes, here are nine dangerous discoveries that should be handled with care. Number 9. Beached Whales this alarming image of an extremely bloated dead fin whale made headlines in 2009 when the creature washed up on an Irish beach. The bloating is a normal part of the decomposition process, but because most whales die and decay in the ocean, we are not used to seeing them in this condition. It's an alarming sight and has caused many people to worry in the past that a rapidly expanding whale carcass might explode. But can this really happen? Yes! In mid-2018, a fisherman discovered a dead humpback whale on the northern coast of New South Wales in Australia. In less than a day, the 20-ton, 43-foot-long corpse essentially tripled in size. Scientists scrambled to find a way to dispose of the corpse before it exploded. Authorities established an exclusion zone around the carcass in case it exploded, but this thankfully didn't happen. The whale deflated on its own, and heavy machinery removed it from the beach. Things might have turned out differently if people hadn't been blocked. While whale explosions are rare, the likelihood of it happening increases when humans interfere with the dead creature. Usually whales will explode because people are trying to take a souvenir, people are trying to climb on it, or crews are trying to move it. When left alone, most whale carcasses form small skin tears, enabling them to release built-up gas. It's a smart idea not to go anywhere near a dead whale, because the liquefying tissues smell absolutely rancid, and the smell will stay on everything. In 2001, there was a dead beached whale, and people brought tools to take some of the meat. Scientists reported that 10 years later, they still reeked. Number 8. World War II Bomb Late last year, a strange artifact appeared on an English beach north of the seaside town of Weston super mare in the Bristol Channel. A Royal Navy bomb disposal team responded to reports of the unknown object. The item in question turned out to be a World War II-era anti-submarine explosive, which the team believes dates back to a time when there was a nearby weapons research facility. After excavating around the device, we established that it was intact and possibly live, Royal Navy Petty Officer Rob Bishop said in a statement following the discovery. His team waited until the next low tide to safely detonate the bomb, fearing that it would explode unpredictably if they tried to handle it any sooner. World War II bombs have turned up in Europe numerous times and require expert handling to avoid putting civilians at risk for injury. This is why professionals encourage the public not to touch anything that looks suspicious or that they may not recognize. But this also happens in other places, including the U.S. In October of last year, a live 100-pound aerial bomb washed ashore on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, near the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. A U.S. Navy Explosive Ordnance Disposal, or EOD, unit secured the area around the explosive and safely detonated it. It's a good thing the proper authorities were around to handle the situation, because the explosion sent sand shooting 60 feet into the air and could have caused a lot of damage to an unsuspecting or curious bystander. The weapon was likely used in a military training exercise during World War II. And now for number 7. But first, want to say a big thank you to Malik's Pokemon opening and Jennifer Dimer for supporting Origins Explained. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. We have lots of videos coming up. Number 7. Dragon's Hole In 2016, China's state-sponsored television network, CCTV, announced that the world's largest blue hole was discovered in the South China Sea. Nicknamed the Dragon Hole, or the Yongle Blue Hole, it's reportedly 987.2 feet deep. Named for their distinctive color, blue holes are underwater caverns or sinkholes that were formed during ice ages. Found near the disputed Paracel Islands, the Yongle Blue Hole is in waters that several countries claim ownership of, including Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, Brunei, the Philippines, Taiwan, and China. Locals call it the Eye. The Dragon's Hole vastly supersedes the depth of Dean's Blue Hole in the Bahamas, which measures 663 feet deep. It is now the world's second deepest blue hole. In calculating the newly discovered hole's depth, researchers considered several factors, including tidal water levels, water temperatures, salt levels, and sea water density, according to Ocean University of China professor Yang Zhuosheng. Although scientists plan to further explore the dragon hole's contents, they have already acknowledged that they're not likely to find much past a certain depth because the water contains little to no oxygen and is not capable of supporting life. 
Blue holes are popular diving attractions, but venturing into one can be extremely dangerous, even for the most experienced divers. The deeper you go, the colder the water gets, and this can shock the system. And depending on the location, soft materials like sand can cave in suddenly. Deep dives also put people at risk of a condition called nitrogen narcosis, which can severely impair judgment, leading some to descend far too deeply without realizing they are endangering themselves and making death a terrifyingly realistic prospect. Number 6. Lethal Gas Cloud August 21, 1986 seemed like any other day to the villagers living along Lake Nyos in Cameroon. But things quickly went awry when a deadly cloud of carbon dioxide emanated from the lake, turning its normally blue waters a deep red and suffocating 1,746 people and 3,500 livestock to death. The disaster may have been caused by a landslide, a small earthquake, a small underwater volcanic eruption on the lake bed, or some other natural event. Either way, it alerted locals and experts alike to the previously unknown hazards that lie beneath the lake and their potential to reoccur. Scientists investigated Lake Nyos and learned that it's fed by underground springs with the capacity to transport dangerous gases to the lake's bottom, where they accumulate, sometimes for centuries at a time. While what triggered the outgassing remains a mystery, it's clear that it could happen again, and the handful of survivors were beyond traumatized. As a result, scientists made it a priority to understand the dynamics behind the disaster and, if possible, stop history from repeating itself. A degassing system was installed in Lake Nyos to prevent another deadly outbreak. It functions by reducing the water CO2 content, thereby hopefully avoiding future catastrophes. Number 5. Naked Black Holes Black holes are essentially regions of density, or singularities, and massive gravitational pull that suck in everything that comes close enough to them past the point of no return. Once an object crosses the boundary surrounding a black hole, known as an event horizon, it will never escape. Also at that point, the laws of physics essentially go out the window. Singularities are strong enough to pull things in faster than the speed of light, meaning even light cannot escape their gravity. The only way for an object to escape would be to flee at the speed of light, which is more or less impossible. As far as scientists know, all black holes have an observable event horizon, a line that we know nothing can cross without being sucked in. But some experts believe it's possible that the universe contains so-called naked black holes that completely lack event horizons. Live Science reported in late 2020 that based on the math of general relativity, it is technically possible for a black hole to exist without the telltale event horizon border. A singularity with no event horizon would be even more dangerous than a traditional black hole. With no clearly delineated boundary, no buffer zone of sorts to keep the contents and activities of a black hole separated from everything outside it, a naked singularity would be much more accessible to the rest of the universe, and vice versa. Scientists believe that even if these terrifying borderless voids exist, they are probably rare. So far, the only known way for a singularity to form is for the center of a massive dying star to collapse in on itself, a process that naturally produces an event horizon. But physicists are also unable to prove that it's impossible for naked black holes to form, even though the very concept seems to go against nature. Extreme conditions would be required for this to happen. Scientists know that sometimes black holes spin fast enough to form a second event horizon within the first one. One theory suggests that when this happens, the two event horizons could cancel each other out and disappear, leaving behind a naked singularity. Thankfully, no black holes are known to spin quite this fast, even though it is technically possible. Additionally, new research shows that a naked singularity would probably be more identifiable than researchers originally thought. Because they behave slightly differently than traditional black holes, they may emanate a much brighter light, one that modern instruments cannot currently detect, but that future technology could possibly pick up. Number 4. Centralia Mine Fire Centralia in Pennsylvania is essentially a ghost town, with just a handful of residents remaining as of 2017. But it was once a bustling coal mining town with over 1,500 residents at its peak. So what happened? In May of 1962, a coal seam fire was started in the underground mines beneath Centralia. Its cause remains debated to this day, but illegal dumping may have played a role. Either way, numerous attempts to control or extinguish the fire failed. The state got involved and closed the Centralia mines for good after detecting lethal carbon monoxide levels. People continued living in Centralia for decades after the fire started, apparently unaware of its dangers. 
but the effects became impossible to ignore when gas filled people's basements, their homes began to tilt above the subterranean blaze, and they experienced health problems. Sinkholes appeared and roads cracked and spewed smoke. In 1992, the government bought out Centralia's residents using eminent domain and condemned the area. Seven residents won the legal right to remain there, but everyone else left and nobody knew can move in. Centralia's zip code was discontinued in 2002, and when the remaining residents pass away, their homes will become government property. Authorities have given up on extinguishing the blaze, which experts estimate could burn for at least another 250 years. Number 3. Collapsing Bridge In 2009, a train driver in Ireland noticed that the bridge he was driving over was nearing the point of collapse. His quick thinking narrowly avoided tragedy. The driver ever so cautiously maneuvered his crowded passenger train over the faulty overpass, which stood over the Malahide estuary, then alerted authorities to the situation. Moments later, a 66-foot section of the bridge fell apart, landing in the water below. Thankfully, nobody was harmed. A subsequent investigation determined that previous safety inspections were inadequate, engineers were inadequately trained, and that the rail company, Irish Rail, failed to take action years earlier in 1997, when the base of a pier bore obvious signs of wear and tear. Blatant negligence came very close to many lives being lost, according to a report from the Rail Accident Investigation Unit. The scale of the potential for disaster was enormous, said Irish Rail spokesman Barry Kenny. He added, the fact that nobody was hurt and there wasn't a derailment doesn't take away from the fact that this was very close to being a very serious tragedy. Irish Rail accepted the report's findings and reassured the public that it was making major changes to ensure that such a near tragedy never happened again. Meanwhile, the disrupted service threw locals into turmoil as they attempted to find alternative means of transportation. Number 2. Balestrino the Balestrino Ghost Village is an abandoned medieval hill town in northwest Italy's Liguria region. It's considered one of the country's most mysterious deserted places, as little is known about its history or demise. Balestrino dates back to the 11th century, but at some point, everyone fled. Residents were reportedly relocated following a series of earthquakes during the 19th century, although this theory remains unsubstantiated. The final inhabitants fled in 1953. Today, the site is enclosed and is off-limits to visitors who are unable to access Balestrino's 12th-century churches of St. George and St. Andrew, among other landmarks. There is a newer Balestrino nearby, which is home to hundreds of residents and attracts plenty of tourists annually, despite their inability to explore the older settlement. It's rumored that there are plans to redevelop the old Balestrino, but some people question whether doing so would be safe, considering the ancient city's reputed history of being plagued by earthquakes. Would you visit this ghost town? Let me know in the comments below. Number 1. The Most Dangerous Place on Earth Roughly 100 million years ago, what's now known as the Sahara Desert in Africa was the most dangerous place on Earth. Known as the Kem Kem Fossil Beds, the site consists of a series of rock formations located in southeastern Morocco, near the Algerian border. At the time, a portion of the region was home to numerous predatory dinosaurs, apex predators who would not normally share an environment in today's world. The fossils, which date back to the Cretaceous period, demonstrate a widespread presence of carnivorous dinosaurs, flying predatory reptiles, and early crocodilians that dwarf today's species. Paleontologists have uncovered evidence of some of the largest ever predatory dinosaurs ever known at the site, including Carcharodontosaurus, a 26-foot-long saber-toothed giant. This was arguably the most dangerous place in the history of planet Earth, a place where a human time traveler would not last very long, explained lead study author Dr. Nizar Ibrahim, an assistant professor of biology at the University of Detroit Mercy. These creatures thrived at a time when the Sahara was lush and full of vegetation, standing in stark contrast to its modern conditions. Oddly, unlike most ecosystems, predators outnumbered plant-eating creatures. Moreover, it's unusual how several extremely large predators cohabited within the environment, apparently lacking a single apex predator that dominated the food chain. Instead of eating each other, these supersized creatures likely fed on humongous fish, some of which were as large as a modern-day car. While visiting a site like Kem Kem is not necessarily dangerous today, if these creatures were still around, we would all be toast. Thanks for watching! If you'd like to hear more about dangerous discoveries, let me know in the comments below. Remember to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Bye!